Okay, so um, we wrapped up multiplying and dividing fractions. Today we're going to move into our next um, part of this module, which is working with decimals. So decimals are important because it, it, it converts from um, you know fractions, so fractions of an inch, turning those into decimal numbers, which um, can make the numbers easier to work with. Lots of different reasons why we would be working with decimals in construction. So um, beginning with kind of the basics of decimals. So the value of a decimal is less than one. Okay, so we think about less than one. So we think about, I think, you know, the most common idea of a decimal maybe is we think about money, right? So here we have 25 cents. 25 cents is less than one dollar. It's part of that dollar is 25 cents of that dollar. Um, all decimals are fractions, but they're not written in a usual fractional form. So a fraction, again, it's a part of a whole. It's less than one, um, just as a decimal is less than one. And decimals are written as numbers to the right of the decimal point, which is a period that marks the beginning of a fractional part of a number. So they are to the right. And I apologize for kind of swiveling back and forth. I haven't figured out a better way to do this. So um, again, here's our decimal, our 0.25 or 25 hundredths or 25 cents. And those numbers are to the right of that decimal point. Um, looking at here, I think this is just a good chart um, to make reference to. So here you have your one hole and it ni it's nice, it breaks it down as far as um, how all these can be represented as a percentile or percent, um, as a decimal, and then as fractions. So you can kind of see as we go, for example, let's go with a half. Um, you got 50%, 50% of something is half of something. A five tenths is half of something. Um, that's half of one, and then we have our mark here of our fractional halves. We have two quarters, which is also equal to a half, and so on and so forth. Excuse me. Um, the decimal point shows that the digits following it represent a fraction. All right. In whole numbers, each place value is ten times greater. Let me go back to that. Ten times greater than the place value to the right, and I'll go over that in one second. With decimals, each decimal place value is 10 times less than the place value to the left. And so let me kind of swing over as we go to that. Um, you know, if I have 0.25 and I have 25, all right? So as I go this way to the left, every time I move that one place value, I'm going to multiply that number by 10 to move the place value. So again, if I was to go and move to this place value, I can multiply times 10 again. Here, every time, put that, times 10. Um, every time we move to the right, a decimal place, we're actually, um, we're going to be less than, okay? So we're going to be dividing by 10, okay? So we go this way, we multiply by 10. Going this way in the decimal system, we are actually dividing by 10. Um, here is showing the decimal equivalent to 125 thousandths um, is equivalent to the fraction 125 thousandths. Um, the number to the right of the decimal point is 125. Okay, so again we swing back over here and kind of write that. We have 125. All right. The denominator is 1,000. So we have 125 thousandths. This is shown by the number of decimal places, digits to the right of the decimal place. And I got a little note below that. Um, it says an easy way to understand that. It's the same, the number of place values is the same number of zeros, okay? So we have one, two, three zeros. We have one, two, three decimal places. So as we would read this in thousands, we would know that three decimal places, because we have one, two, three zeros, we would know the three decimal places would be equivalent to a thousand. The thousands, I'm sorry. 
Um, and I think some people kind of get tripped up once you start looking to the right of the decimal place. And I think part of that is because, you know, as we go to the decimal place, this first place value is the ones, um, whereas we go to this side of the decimal point, we automatically get to the tenths. And I, we don't have once. And I think that kind of messes people up because as they start going over here, they start kind of losing track of, um, of which place value that is. Moving forward here, so rounding decimals. Again, this is something that a lot of people struggle with still, which is rounding. It's very valuable school, uh, skill, especially you know if you're looking at a list of materials and you're trying to add it up in your head. You need to be able to round those numbers to make them numbers that are easy to work with in your head. So, um, it's a number. It's a method of simplifying a number by dropping digits below a certain place value. So, anytime you're told to round, you're going to be told to round to a certain place value. Um, the standard rule for rounding are round up if the digit to the right of the specified place value is equal to or greater than five. Um, and you know when I taught elementary school that rule was five or more, let it soar. Um, round down of the digit to the right in the specified place value is less than five. So um, we would say four or less, let it rest. All right. So I'm going to go through a couple different um, problems here. Um, if I want to, let's say, if I have 6 and 78 hundredths, um, and I would say round this to the nearest tenth, okay? So I'd look for my place value, that is my tenths. Um, I would look to that place value to the right of it, all right? This is greater than 5, meaning that this number is going to go up. So if I rounded 6 and 78 hundredths to the nearest tenth, that would be six and eight tenths. Um, looking at our sample problems here, it's we have nine and thirty-eight hundredths. Uh, around the following decimal place or a decimal to the next highest place value, okay? So my next highest place value is going to be the tenths. Okay, again I look here, we got eight again, all right? So that is going to round up. So that would round to nine and four tenths. Alright? The only tricky thing you can get to sometimes is if you were to have, uh, let's say, 6.99, and I wanted to round this here, okay, well, we see it's 9, okay, so that's going to make us round up, okay, well, that rounds up, well, 9 rounds up to 10, okay, well, you can't put 10 in a single place value, so that would carry over again, so that would actually round up to 7, because this would become um, a 10, okay, but you can't write 10 in that one place value, so we would add 10 to that, so that would be adding 1.0 to it, which would give us 7 or 7.0 if you want to look at it that way. Um, you know, looking at the, the staying put, um, if I was to have 5 and 74 hundredths, and I, I'm looking with hundredths a lot, I'm gonna, I'll make it thousands, okay, and I want to round it to the nearest place value, okay, um, or the next place value, I have 4 and I look at my 3, well, that is four or less, or it's below five, okay? So that number is going to stay put, so that would be five and 74 hundredths, okay? So this would not round up to the next digit. It's going to stay right where it's at. Um, looking here, again, in our Ed Puzzle, I'm going to have you um, solve some of those problems right now. All right, next thing is going to be comparing and ordering decimals. So putting things into um, order based on their decimal value. And again, this kind of tricks people because sometimes you can have a number that has more digits and looks very similar but actually has a less value. All right. So to read a decimal to determine its value, read it by the pl the first place value first. All right. So we read it left to right. We're going to read it like a word. All right. Um, so we would read it to by the highest place value first. So um, just to compare decimals, um, look at the same place values to compare the numbers in the place value. And I know that you know sometimes it's just easier to see. Uh, let me just kind of throw out some numbers. I'm going to say 0.3, um, 0.033. I'll say 303 and 0 
All right, they all look similar, right? They all got threes and decimal points and numbers. Now here's what that rule means over there, okay? How I wanna do this is I'm going to look at my highest place values, okay? So here, they're all decimals, I have no whole numbers. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is my tenths places, okay? So I look, I have a three, a zero, a three, a zero. If I wanna put these in order of least to greatest, I'm gonna look, well I have a zero and I have a zero, okay? So I know automatically these two are my lowest, okay? So I'm gonna look at my next place value, okay? Now I have a three and I have another zero automatically tells me that that is my lowest value, okay? Because I have 0, 3, 0, 0, so I know I'm done with this. Now I can obviously look and see, I can know now this one's going to be my next one. Okay, so I'm done with that. Now I'm going to look, okay? I have a 3, and I have no more place values here, okay? So this would be, that could be the same as seeing it as 0.3, zero, zero, zero. Once I add these zeros, they, they don't add any value. They they just stay put. And let me kind of go up there and go like that. Okay, so I have three, zero, zero, zero. Here I have three, zero, three, okay? So where this would have a zero in its place value, I have three here, telling me that ha that has more value. So that's going to make this my next, leaving 0 0.303, all right? Um, now in the Ed puzzle, I'm going to have you answer this next question down, which is select the answer that places the decimals in order from smallest to largest. Again, if you struggle with that, please go back and rewind the video. I need to keep moving on because I'm going to run out of time. They only let me upload 20 minute videos. So, and I don't want it to make it any more than that. Alright, so here we are going to convert decimals to fractions. So we're going to set the fraction up in the way the decimal is set aloud. Okay, so how we're going to read it and then reduce the fraction to the lowest terms, all right? So I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to throw out some decimals. The example in the notes gives you five tenths. Um, I'm going to go with uh, four tenths, okay? So four, point 0.4, that's read as four tenths. That equals four tenths. Whatever I say tenths is the number that's going to go on the bottom, okay? I can say four hundredths, okay, and because I said four hundredths, that hundred is going to be on the bottom. That's all you got to do. And then from there, you just simplify it to its lowest form. Here I know that both of these can be divided by two, so I'm going to divide them both by two. Simplify that to two fifths, okay. Um, same thing over here. This is both um, divisible by four, okay. I know four goes from one to a hundred, so I'm going to divide them both by four, and that's going to give me 125th, okay? Um, I could say um, 62 hundredths, and that's going to give me 62 hundredths. I looked at both even, um, so I know both of those can be divided by 2. If I do that, that's going to give me 31 fiftieths, and 31 is a prime number, so they cannot be divided by any of the same numbers, so that one's done. Um, so, watching that here, Again, um, I'm going to have you do some of those problems in our Ed Puzzle video. If you're not sure how to do that, um, come back and watch our video again. And those are there for you to solve. Moving on to the next, um, converting fractions to a decimal. To convert a fraction to a decimal, we are going to divide the numerator by the denominator. Um, so we're going to place a decimal after the dividend, and then we're going to put zeros out. So if you remember long division, we're going to be doing that. Um, so where we would go for a remainder that is in a decimal form, that's what we're going to do. So the zeros placed after the decimal do not change the value. Okay, you can add when you have a decimal. Okay, once you have a decimal number and you add zeros to that decimal number, um, it does not matter, okay? So like I showed you with that point 0.3, um, I could put a point zero 0.09, that is nine hundredths. That is still nine hundredths. That is still nine hundredths. Well, I think you get the idea. 
those don't change the value of it. So if we're going to convert a fraction to a decimal, um, I'm going to say, keep it simple, one half, okay? That is going to be said one divided by two. A fraction is also a domestic, uh, division problem, okay? So we are going to have one divided by two. So two cannot go into one. So I'm going to put a decimal right there. And as soon as I do that, I need to put a decimal above there, okay? Now I can add a zero, all right? Now two can go into 10. Two goes into 10 five times. Five times two is 10. I subtract them. Now I get a zero, which tells me that one half equals five tenths, okay? And we are actually already looked at that. I'm gonna give you a little bit tougher example of that. Um, I don't even know. Uh, I go, I guess I'll go nine tenths, whatever. Okay, so this is 10 divided by nine. Um, so I would set that up and it's gonna be hard to get your mind, or I'm sorry, nine divided by 10, that's my fault. Um, because this number is smaller than this number, you're always gonna wanna divide them the opposite, but this is gonna be nine divided by 10. 10 can get, now go into nine, put my decimal there, put a decimal there, add a zero, does not add value, it's still nine. Now 10 goes into 90, nine times, nine times 10 is 90. I subtract those and I get a zero. So nine tenths equals that, okay? Um, they can get a little bit more challenging. Go into something that's, um, you know, if I did seven eighths, that's going to be eight, or I'm sorry, seven divided by eight. Put that, um, that decimal there, and that would go in there seven times, and that is going to give us, oops, my bad, nine times, okay? That's going to give us. 63. Um, oh, there eight times. It's going to give us 64. All right, Ooh, we're probably going to get a repeater here. Um, all right, so then we're going to subtract, and that's going to give us six. We're going to put another zero there. We're going to bring that down. Now we're going to get our seven. Okay, that's going to give us 56. And now, okay, we're going to subtract. That's going to give us a four. We're going to bring another zero down. That's going to give us a 40. And that's going to give us five. Okay, so that's going to show us that seven eighths equals one eight seven five. I should know that one because I work with seven eighths a lot as a carpenter. So. Um, now I will have you solve a few of these problems in the Ed Puzzle. And I need to do this quick because I'm going to run out of time here in my video. So um, going between percentages and decimals, um, a percentage is a part of a whole that is broken into, well, we know that because we are, hopefully we always get a 100% on our test. So those are broken into 100 equal parts. So they can be converted to a decimal by removing the percentage symbol. So we take this percentage symbol away and then we move the decimal point two places to the left, okay? So here we see this example, 75% becomes 0.75 and I'm gonna throw one over here real quick. Um, we have 63%, we get rid of that percentage sign, put a decimal point right there and we move it two places to the left. That's all you gotta do. And next thing you know, your percentage becomes a decimal, okay? And if you think about that, you got a 63%, you got 63 hundredths. All right, and then again, I'm sorry I'm rushing here, but I'm trying to get within my 20 minutes here. Um, decimals can be converted to percentages by moving the decimal point two places to the right and adding the percentage. This is the same thing as multiplying that by 100. We've got two zeros, that moves the decimal point two times. Again, so we see here, I'm gonna throw a quick example at you. They're in the notes too. 
Um, but if we have, I'm going to go back to our 0.63, and we multiply that times 100, we need to move that decimal point two times, one, two, and that would go back to 63%. Okay, it's just a flip-flop of each other.